There you go. Okay. Um, we're excited about this Sunday. Uh, and not just the pig roast at 12 o'clock. Uh, we'll, it'll be the, the last in our series on freedom. And uh, I think we've heard some uh, really good feedback, I think, of having the series and, and running it through for four weeks. So we'll probably uh, try this again in the fall, probably in October or so when people start coming back. So uh, maybe with another pig roast or whatever else we're going to cook up. I don't know. So um, we'll see. Uh, in any case, uh, when you see Julie, thank you for that. She's, you know, not just getting the all the trimmings and, and you know, she'll dress up all the tables, but I think she's making personally all the sangria. So it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she bought her lemons. She's she's putting it all together, so that's great. That's good. Uh, so uh, we're just trying to tempting those who are uh, at other places. Um, it, it's going to be a real a real pig roast. I it's think a real, the pig. real real pig. <laughs> so, so, it is. Uh, real. I think so. <laughs> so uh, in any case, we're looking forward to it, and just so that you know, no matter where you are, uh, uh, whether you're here in Naples or someplace else in the country, we're excited about that. And the topic this time is uh, freedom from uh, worry and fear. And I think part of the discussion is going to be about the role of prayer. At least that's what we'll be talking about at the Sunday Forum. So I hope um, I won't be alone here um, at 10, 15. So for anyone who gets up early anyway, we'll have special treats in here. I hear mm -hmm. to the grapevine. So that'll be nice. So we'll go right before the service and then we'll try uh, What else? What else? What else? You know, one, one time we had a um, meeting at the beach, you know, Lauderdale, Lauderdale yeah. Park. I think it was a service. We do something like that. Is that on the Easter, maybe a sunrise or? Yeah. Some people do that for like a sunrise yeah. service, which would be really great. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we did the early service here at Easter, and people like that a lot. Yeah, we so, used to go to the beach for the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to do that in the summer in other places. That's the best thing here. Not in the summer. <laughs> no. So we had to find another cooler uh, point. <laughs> uh, the kids are out at the park, mm -hmm. so we're excited about um, what we used to call vacation Bible school. Oh, yeah. So we're very excited about that. Today is water day. Oh, that's the so, yeah. really By the way, Sunday, Sunday we will have a jump house and a water slide. Here. Bring your bathing suits. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but you can't do that unless you fill out a form for liability. Yeah, right? So Vivian will be. I'll pass. I'm kidding, of course. Oh, yes. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> yeah. So that's mostly for the kids. So we'll yeah, I think Pastor Steve, though, he, he, went, he went one time. Yeah, yeah, when he first came yeah, here, I think like, uh, when he yeah. was still in his 40s. Uh, you could do that then. <laughs> yeah. I bought a dunk tank. I had a friend who lost a finger that way. You're kidding. Yeah. Who? Really? A friend of mine lost her finger. She was like, it was kind of a, um, they drop you in and there was some sort of thing that caught her finger. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> you think they'd be designed to prevent that? Right. It'd be just yeah. getting dumped. Most of them homemade. Oh, all right. I did not know that. That's good to know. Yeah. So I'll say no anytime I'm asked to participate. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hey. 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 Oh, good it morning. was his fault. He was talking. He can stop. You think he only stops on Sundays? One guest. One guest. You're talking. He said if I needed a note, I could come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, anything else? I'm trying to think of. Um, the thing I can pick on you. We can practice. <laughs> so, so. So go ahead, Margaret. Show yes, off. So, Come oh, on. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a It's a my hand. It's, I can make it move. Wow. And I have like uh, four what different grips that are that are um, programmed into it right now. 
Yeah, prehension. Yeah. 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 There's all sorts of codes in there. My gosh, you've got to get them memorized. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So those are yeah. all the four things that can Technology do. is just phenomenal. Yeah. It's just it's phenomenal. That is wonderful. really very cool. Amazing. Something. <laughs> it is something. You know, it, 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 it's something. Wearing that all day is like practice all day. Yeah, and, but you know, I don't do that. So, oh, you don't? I, no, I'm supposed to, but um, well, you're breaking it in right now, or it's yeah. breaking you in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time, you know, so the fitting has to be just yeah. Yeah. Have, have you have you uh, been on FaceTime or something with your grandkids? And I. Yeah, I did have it on one time when I was, um, it was, it always used to hurt every time I had it on. So, yeah. but I did have it on one time. And so um, her mom said, yeah, I was talking about your hand. I know grandkids have got <laughs> crazy. Yeah. 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 They just go crazy over something. Like so the magic finger can heal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, you got you go. oh, Like, let me. So I, I did have to find out, like one time I went, you know, I was practicing. So I picked something up. And I couldn't get it to open again. <laughs> so, and uh, the the OT people and stuff didn't know. So I just emailed the company. It's like, yeah, like, is there a, a release for this? If it gets stuck in a in a grip, and you're just too tired and you can't get your muscles to work to just let go. I think it's like the Wizard of Oz. You just have to have an oil can. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's just it's, Don't think it's about all the brain. it's all neurolog you know, it's all yeah. neurological. So if your brain just kind of oh, shuts yeah. down, and you're like, I'm really trying to move this muscle here, and it's not moving. So <laughs> I noticed that you used your left hand to get your Bible out of the bag. Was there a way that you should use your right hand? Well, this will be a helper. Okay. So with this being so heavy, I probably would never, you know, because I'm so yeah. I've had I haven't had the hand for ten months. Okay. So I do everything with this hand. So this will be a helper, more, you know, like you're opening a tea Eventually, bag, yeah. and I don't have to use my mouth, right? You know, right. Yeah. Ziploc bags. Right. Um, but eventually, you know, I won't write with it. Okay. Uh, yeah. And um, but I guess I could because you can pick up heavy things with it. We can practice those things. Yeah. It takes Plus, time. I did. I just turned it off too. Uh huh. So. <laughs> so it's not going to do anything now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Give wonderful. it a rest. So, but but if I say anything that really upsets you, you can turn it back on. <laughs> oh yeah, I can turn it on. It's very easy. Yeah, I just didn't want it to go, you know, keep moving between. between it's great to see it. Well, that was a long that's time good. coming. It was. So that's got to be just exciting to finally have that now. It was more exciting, I guess, when I got it until I realized how hard it was going to be. Mm. And so that's why I say, like, it's not my friend. It'd be interesting to be with other people who've gone through that for how long you've taken to learn this or that. Or yeah. What are the tricks? I guess. Yeah, that's right. And there's, oh, <laughs> it, it, yeah. So there, um, yeah, there's no one in town that I know of. Oh. But at the Empower Fest I went to, there were people. So it's a shame I didn't have it beforehand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'll go to one next Before. year. Well, you yeah. might be teaching it by that time. No. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah. we're jumping into Philemon. This is an exciting book. And one, because it's so short. We can read through it. Um, it's, it's a book. Uh, that's unique. It's the uh, shortest book, obviously, in the New Testament, the shortest letter we have with Paul. But um, we just are dying to find out what happened. And we don't know. We don't know. The We're slave, terrible. Terrible. yeah, the slave Onesimus brings this letter from Paul back to his um, master, um, Philemon. And we just want to know what happened. I mean, was he received back? Um, so before we read it, and we're going to read this, Melissa, so yeah. just, you know, um, uh, just a review. There were, what, 60 million slaves in the Roman Empire. This was just part of the economy. And you became a slave through all sorts of means. So we got to be careful here not to compare necessarily slavery in the Roman Empire with our American experience. Because right. it wasn't based on race 
in the Roman Empire, it was uh, conquered people. Or if you got into financial issues, you became, you know, we, we was call that in the colonial era, a debtor's prison. The difference being, I could buy my way out of slavery mm -hmm. in the Roman period. So I, I run into some hardships. I become a slave for a while. I save my money. I pay my master to become free. And then I become a free citizen. Right. That's very different than the American experience. So it's slavery. It's bad. It's just not the same brand, kind, mm -hmm. quality right. of slavery uh, that we know from uh, our experiences. Mm -hmm. However, if you're my slave, you're my property. So and I can do with my property as I so desire. That was true of all Roman life. Um, you don't have the idea, the Jewish idea of stewardship, or what later became a Christian idea of stewardship, that God owns all things, and I'm here to steward them. It's rather, it's mine, I can do with it as I want. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's still, I think, an idea that plays itself out you know, here in the States. Some people feel very strongly about that. Now, we say it differently, of course, we, but things are mine. Therefore, I don't want to pay taxes. All taxes are theft, <laughs> right? Because this is my money. And that was the Roman idea. No taxes. The taxes were theft. So um, the whole society depended, first of all, on philanthropy. So if you're going to build a temple, then someone had to pay for it. Or if certain projects, uh, sexy projects in the city, maybe a library or something would, would be built by an ind a rich individual. <laughs> but if you're not paying taxes, how do you get things done? Well, you conquer land, they pay taxes, as did the Jewish people. And you would take their people, bring them back to Rome as slaves to work the farms, to work the, the families. So here we have an estimates, and we'll read that something happened. We don't know what it was. But the best guess are theft, that he stole from his boss, from his master, and escapes, because now he knows he's in trouble. Yeah. But when you escape, you're in more trouble. Mm -hmm. Just That would be very similar uh, to the American experience. And so Philemon has every right to go after him mm -hmm. and to punish him harshly for what he's done. Uh, we're talking about whipping, brutal uh, mm -hmm. punishment. Look, Onesimus then feels trapped. So he goes to um, visit Paul in prison. Why? Because he knew that his master really thought highly of Paul. Philemon had converted uh, either in Ephesus or Colossae, I can't remember. Um, was, I think, in Ephesus and then went to Colossae as part of the church there, but thought very highly of Paul. Obviously, the slave Onesimus knows this, so he's going and saying, can you talk to my master on my behalf? Mm -hmm. But a funny thing happens in prison. Onesimus becomes a Christian. Yeah. He converts. Okay, now that's a game changer for Paul, and that's the, sort of the background of this letter. Paul has been talking about new humanity, new humanity. And sometimes we think about that just in personal terms. My heart's changed. I become a Christian. The Holy Spirit changes my life. But here Paul is saying, oh, no, it's bigger than that. New humanity in the church means new humanity. All the old relationships are gone. Mm -hmm. And you can just hear Philemon going, a, a what? Excuse me? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You're not saying, are you, that the slave-master relationship has changed? And of course, what does Paul say? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Husband and wife's change, the family changes, social structures change. He's arguing that Jesus now creates a new humanity with new rules. Now, that's one thing is a theoretical argument, but now in this book, it's going to become a real argument that he's going to make to Philemon. How did Philemon respond? 
when Onesimus goes back with the letter and hands it to him, he probably traveled with some other people. We don't know. However, what we do know, which hints that it was successful, was that in 110, in your sheet that um, Melissa handed out, yeah. in 110, there is a bishop, Ignatius, in Antioch, one of the four largest Christian churches uh, in the world at that time. And he writes to the Bishop of Ephesus, whose name is Onesimus. Onesimus. Now, what bishop uses the name of a slave? The slave, the guy, the original guy. So there could be the original guy, <laughs> right? Who's received back and, and received standing in the church, becomes the bishop, or someone who is pointing to that story. It's obviously a success story. Uh, but it could have been that uh, the slave then is taken back by Philemon into his house. Um, things work out so well that he then becomes a leader in the church and is then sent to Ephesus as a bishop. Uh, in any case, that someone would use his name is significant. That seems to suggest it was successful. Otherwise, why would you do that? The other thing that's interesting is that Ephesus, because remember Paul spent over two years there, mm -hmm. and you can, you can tell that's kind of the hub where people convert, and then they go to Colossae, and they convert, they go other places. Um, that was thought to be the original place where the library of Paul's letters is collected. And so interesting here, the bishop, who's got his the library there, the church, includes this personal letter in the collection uh, that he's going to pass on. And again, it's the only private letter we have in the New Testament. There might have been others that Paul wrote, but not included in the New Testament. So all the other letters are to the church at Ephesus, the church at Colossae. And here we've got a letter written to Philemon. So there seems to be that argument that he says, you know, I got this great letter, you know, that Paul wrote to me. I think we'll put that in the church library. And then it gets incorporated um, because it's 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 problem solving based on the gospel. So any any questions there? I think this is that's pretty exciting. I think it's exciting all this happening with a small letter like this. Yeah. In fact. As we read this, we should be thinking about structures in our own lives that we take for granted. That if Paul were writing to us a letter, he would call us into a new humanity to change those relationships. We know he talked about new humanity over against Jews and Gentiles, right? We've been reading that Galatians and Ephesians, right? There are no now no Jews or Gentiles. You're one in Christ. He also says there's no male or female. And no matter what the Roman Catholic Church says, women were leaders in the church. Mm -hmm. They just were. So here, name, man, Karen. I, I, you know, I think some women had money. And that was important in that early. Well, they supported church. them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, it was Herod's um, next in command. His wife. Boy, yeah. whose wife was the major financial supporter of Jesus. So basically, the Jews are paying taxes to Herod and to Rome. <laughs> and come back to them. <laughs> and it all comes back to Jesus uh, as he goes to the Best Western and spends the night with his disciples. <laughs> it's, it, but it's, it's fascinating because often, yes, women ran for the households financially mm -hmm. and then... Uh, wealthier women that either sponsored the church because you wouldn't have a building right? right you'd have a home you invite people to your home right. or would pay the bills as jesus is you know wandering around the countryside for three years with 12 disciples was that pretty typical that the women ran the purse in the household in, in the you might have to look my, my instinct is yes because it's often, but you, if a larger household probably had a manager, someone you paid. Mm -hmm. Is it that way now? Better. 
<laughs> well, women are raising the children, so they have a sense of yeah. what's what's what they they're do. spending money on, and the men are outside doing the hard physical work. Yeah, or sitting in the gate, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, preaching or networking. <laughs> I'll call it networking. <laughs> <laughs> It's networking. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I meant. Um, yeah, when uh, it's had a role, but I, I think in larger households, just like today, like uh, I, I grew up next to a very large farm and asked me to work on the farm. Uh, that was run by a manager. It was just too big for the family. Yeah, yeah. Now there were family things too, but they weren't as big as as the whole household. So you might hire someone, a slave. Uh -huh. To run your house. Again, my guess is this is what happened with um, Onesimus here. He was probably in charge of the purse and took off the, it, it off the purse. <laughs> so that could have gotten in trouble. But here now, Paul is saying even the slave master relationship, which is at the core of the economy of that time, is different when, you, when we have brothers in Christ. Now, this plays itself out. Some of us grew up this way. I don't know if this is still taught, but some of us were taught you'd never sue another Christian. For example, you'd never take another Christian to court. Just mm -hmm. kind of. Well, we, was, we just couldn't. You didn't sue. It wasn't Christian to sue to anybody. Say, yeah. That's kind of how I would. Anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just don't do that. Mm. Well, I'm trying to think of other rules that we learned. Um, or you don't sue for your gain, you know, you wouldn't do it for more than what you could help yeah. someone else sue, but you would you would yeah. you would take well like if you, you had, would take the, the, the hurt, you'd say, Well, you know, if someone comes to steal your coat, you give them the second coat, right? It was kind of the sermon in the mouth. Yeah. 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 Other I'm trying to think of other rules that would sort of counter counter cultural, right? You think anybody, anybody can think of anything else? You mean rules that we grew up with? Yeah. That were countercultural. They were, put it this way, they were church rules, but didn't make much sense outside the church. Mm -hmm. Outside the church, you can sue. In church, we'd say, mm, maybe not. So you can't be any part day. of the Mason organization. What's that? The Masons. We had Rainbow Girls as a part of it. Yes. As in confirmation, I was not supposed to belong. Yeah, but Missouri they said had certain, certain were very much yeah. because it was taking an oath. It was about um, secret secrecy and oaths. No, Missouri yeah. said mm -hmm. it wasn't about the charitable work. It was that there were secret yeah. handshakes. And... She must have had my It's like secret, secret handshakes. Secret. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, that, so what I'm thinking about now as I read this is more and more I believe the religion of the day um, has moved from the church into the political sphere so that my value sets and the way I think are determined by my political party to a significant degree. And I'm taught in my political party more and more, especially during years, seasons of voting, not just to not to disagree with people from the other party, but actually um, to criticize them, maybe even to hate them because they're dangerous to each party tends to heighten the fear the of the other, of the, heighten the rhetoric mm -hmm. so much so that, you know, some of us fear violence in the fall because uh, even before the election, but probably even more so after the election, because the rhetoric is so sharp. And then you'd say, well, wait a minute, those, those are people in my own family. Wait a minute, those are people in my own church. Wait a minute, those are people in my own neighborhood. But we don't think it through. The rhetoric sets of value system. And again, that might be something Paul would write a letter and say, wait, wait a minute. You got caught in some worldly structures. The new humanity in Christ doesn't accept that. 
I'm just trying to think of how we might be reading this letter if Paul wrote it to us, since the slave issue is, is uh, one behind us a little bit. So in any case, you will notice, first of all, in the first line, how is Paul going to introduce himself? Prisoner. 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 He is a prisoner. <laughs> He's in prison. Yes. So th th this is a very strong uh, use of language here. Melissa, oh, let's walk us through this. And, sure. and as she's reading it through, try to pick up, even those who are joining us live stream, if you've got the Bible in front of you, what are some of the key phrases that you pick up on here in Philemon? Okay. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, also to Athea, our sister, and Archippus, a fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man, and now a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son, Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and me. I am sending, I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back. Not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more, prepare a guest room for me because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. All right. What did you uh, <laughs> What did you hear in, in his language? He's presenting Onesimus as a fellow Christian and as a fellow Christian by Lehman to accept him. And also a son. And son yes, here is relationship. Is uh, referring to the conversion. Mm -hmm. And so then he, through his conversion, we've become normally you'd say brothers, but here I think because he's an apostle, Younger. he's kind of someone standing. Younger. He's gonna, um, you know, almost like uh, <coughs> make the comparison. It's almost like uh, Biden calling uh, Kamala Harris kid the other day. <laughs> now, he he used to call everybody in the Senate kid. When you're older, you know, you look at someone who's younger, even though they're adults, you might say, kids, I don't know what, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a term of endearment, but here it's a term of, of the conversion. He's my son. Yeah. Because I led him to the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else do you pick up? We seem kind of demanding. In, in a gentle way. Yeah, right. Light of hand, kind of. <laughs> 
So what what line are you looking at? Hmm. You could order it, right? Yeah. 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 I can order this but I want you to, continue. to use the language of all other places. I can lay down the law, but I don't. Mm -hmm. So what's he saying instead? Because it's the right thing to do. Can't because I, love love. I want you to do this freely and spontaneously out of love, not because I'm demanding it. And not to mention that you owe me your very self. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. right. I this throw is, that in there. I, it's a little stick. <laughs> he is my heart. That's how. Yeah. He is my heart. Yeah. <laughs> now, parents understand this kind of language. I'm just trying, you know, you're, you're asking your kids to do something out of a free, out of, you know, freely. Yeah. Uh, like if you ask one child to forgive the other child, okay, you just like, I want you to forgive, you know, or I want you to ask for forgiveness. Because I forgive you all the time. That's right, okay. <laughs> and I want you to do this freely. But... Remember, of course. <laughs> I said you want to go to the movie on Saturday. Uh, You're right. <laughs> there, there, yeah, there's, okay, it, he wants it to be a gospel motivated act mm -hmm. freely. So I'm not going to demand it. You can do it freely. However, as you're considering to do it freely, just remember. I could demand it. <laughs> yeah. Roosevelt walks softly and carry a big stick. There you go. <laughs> now, there's part of this is Greek rhetoric. This is how it's done, right? This is taught, you know, in, in all the classic. Because, you know, you notice he says, and I want you to do it spontaneously. And I'm so confident that you'll even do more, more. than I would have ever asked. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, now the pressure's on. Right. And how does he even up the pressure more? Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. this one. And we'll repay it. Nothing ever but, first of all, he's going to stand in the breach. He says, if he owes him something, don't make that an issue. Right. That will not okay. be an issue. I'll, I'll pay, pay for it. I'll yeah. pay for it. And I write this in my own hand. Mm -hmm. Right. And is that that unusual from other Paul's letters? It seems to me that he had a scribe writing the letter or interpreting his words. Paul's well educated, so he can do this. Yeah. Most others like would probably have a scribe because they couldn't uh, write it. Yeah. I would think here again might be a parent. Two kids are two of your kids are in conflict. Conflict. <laughs> and, and let's say there's money involved where you might say look I want you two to reconcile and look I'll cover whatever right. whatever damage yeah. because I don't want that to be the issue right, between in our family I don't want the money to be the issue mm -hmm. so let's take that off the table and if we take the money off the table is it okay Oh, and by the way, how does he put pressure on uh, Philemon? I want you, you to prepare you. your guest house, yeah. <laughs> your guest room. So I'm going to come. Coming. And, I'm coming to visit you. I just can't wait. <laughs> and Philemon says, and, "Oh, brother." And of course, I hope I'll see uh, Anesimus in the house when I come to visit. You know. <laughs> so, what are we picking up here about how? This new humanity works because that's what's behind. It's a very concrete letter, and you're getting a little bit of Paul's personality mixed in here. You pick up some of his psychology as well. This would have been yet good with the forgiveness um, theories. This, this letter. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Romans sure wouldn't like this new humanity because it's upping the slavery status. They couldn't comprehend that for sure. So if, I mean, what you're saying is if Philemon buys into this, which it seems like from history he did. Yeah. That's impressive. You know, the based on Christ now, I get it. Right. 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 So right. now, Onesimus too has some pressure. I now have to serve Philemon, not as a slave, but as a brother. So I still got to do the work, right? But now I'm doing it freely, not because I'm a slave. I'm doing it out of Christian obligation. Mm -hmm. And Paul's coming, and I better be here. And 
<laughs> yeah, there's some pressure on him as well yeah. to. Uh, I'm following. We through. don't have. I mean, you're you're expecting here the because we're Americans, you're expecting the obvious argument. Well, why don't we just get rid of slavery? Their whole economy is based on this. They had more slaves than citizens, really. So the thing that was feared most was slave rebellion. And Paul's not trying to upend the whole institution of slavery, but rather how Christians interact with each other, that new humanity. So I serve my master freely, not as a slave. I don't see my, so in other words, an SMS, you don't have to take on the, the identity of slave, slave, but you should freely, just like Philemon's freely taking you back you need to freely serve him. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> wow. And you wonder how that works down the line. Because mm -hmm. obviously, if that was an essence who became the bishop, you know, he was free to serve or maybe to move on. Did he still have to pay for his freedom? I mean, I, it, this leaves yeah. all these questions. How did... How long would he remain in that relationship, serving by mm -hmm. If there's only the bonds of love that tie them together, it'd be like your kids staying at home to take care of you. They do so because they love you, really. But they can go see. back to their homes, right? So if the child stays and takes care of you, they're doing so freely, not because... Mm -hmm. Not because you force them to do that. You know, they're looking, looking at the inheritance. inheritance. <laughs> <laughs> I want my motives. Motives. What's the motive? There's that. There's, There's that. that. <laughs> the in, some, in some households, there might be the inheritance. In other households, there might be. Yeah. yeah um, that's, you know. Um, yeah. So, but that's. We went with motives. But you're getting at the issue. Mm -hmm. what, what is my motivator? Mm -hmm. Why am I here taking care of me? Right. Is it for inheritance? Is it because <laughs> there is social pressure in the family that I should do my duty? Yeah. Or do I do this freely? And we've all seen examples of all, all those motivations, right? We've all seen families where it worked one way or the other way. Mm -hmm. I love the statement where he says, "Convent of your obedience." Yes, mm -hmm. there it is. There it is. Do oh, <laughs> even more than I say. Yes, yeah, yeah, not just right. the minimum, but more. He must have been a very commanding presence, official or official person. Paul. Paul. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I, I persuasive. Yeah. Yes. Or what I meant was, um, he was obviously a leader, and uh, people looked up to him. Uh, both here. Here's. I mean, he's got that unique relationship now with mm -hmm. Philemon and Onesimus. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you it, know Onesimus means useful? Mm -hmm. mm. No, yes, this is my, my Bible. The name Onesimus means useful. Mm. So he uses that word here, right? Um, it's probably a play on words. I'm assuming. That's what it says. Yeah. Uh, where, where, where is that? What's the <laughs> verse? Where he verse, says, 11. verse eleven. Formerly he was useless to you. He's probably playing off the word right. Onesimus. Mm -hmm. Formerly he was useless, but now he can live up to his name, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's useful both to you and me. So a slave is physically taken out the letter right. arrives with it. Right. Yeah. To Philemon. Philemon then had every right to throw at least maybe whipped, you know. Uh, I think I've read commentaries where uh, Onesimus probably did not travel alone to bring letter back, but maybe brought other Christians from Ephesus with him to yeah, Colossae. Yeah. Right, to add, to, you know. Right. Uh, and to defuse the situation. <laughs> yes. Was Blake been carried by Psychus? Mm-hmm. And you could see that, you know, uh, sometimes it's nice to have someone else in the room. 
mm -hmm. a witness. <laughs> to add pressure. Yeah, right. And um and we don't know. That's that's what's uh boy, you just uh, been curious about all sorts of things. Even after a couple of years, let's say it was successful, someone interviewing as we would do on TV. So now how are things working out? Yeah. With Philemon. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Obviously, it worked well because of history seems to suggest it worked mm -hmm. well. But that's a we'd want to know the details. It's almost like Jesus' infant narrative. We want to know more about how he grew up and what was the relationship with his father and mm -hmm. where did he work. Mm -hmm. We just were so curious about those things just because that's the way we're built as Americans. And yet uh, text just doesn't just doesn't go there. Oh, it's just you know, darn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. All right, are we ready for the film? Mm. Okay, so we're now we're going to roll Philemon. And again, think about the situation. This is a great book because look, we read it. We've only read three or four books because they're so short. Uh, but this one's loaded with so mm -hmm. interesting dynamics, interesting storylines. Um, and we get it. We, we, we get how radical a change this new humanity is. Uh, that Paul is pointing to. By the way, one other thing, did you notice in all of other other letters of Paul, which are longer, like Galatians, uh, Romans, even uh, Colossians and Ephesians, Paul lays out the gospel. He tells the story of Jesus' death and resurrection and then builds the argument for a different ethical living as a new humanity. Here he does. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's maybe an assumption that they know it. Yeah, I think it yeah. says that House of Phil Philemon was religion. The house was a church which had true religion. But the testimony of this house did not affect Onesimus, who remained unconverted till after his contact with Paul. Yeah. So Phil yep. Philemon. How do you say that? Philemon. No divisions. So Paul, uh, some commentators say, and I'm somewhat persuaded here, I'm somewhat not persuaded, uh, that Paul actually plays the role of Christ here. I will take the burden, right? Just yes. like Jesus the carries the sin on the cross. I will carry any burdens so that you can be reconciled. So he's playing the role rather than wow. telling the story of Jesus. And he's in prison. But he's in prison. Although, get your guest, get your guest room ready. <laughs> Paul's letter to Philemon. It was written during one of Paul's many imprisonments, and it's actually his shortest letter in the New Testament. But don't let its size trick you. It's actually one of the most explosive things that Paul ever wrote. Here's the backstory that we can piece together from details within the letter. Philemon was a well-to-do Roman citizen from Colossae who likely met Paul during his mission in Ephesus and he became a follower of Jesus. Then later, when Paul's co-worker Epaphras started a Jesus community in Colossae, Philemon became a leader of a church that met in his house. Now, Philemon, like all household patriarchs in the Roman world, owned slaves, one of whom was named Onesimus. And at some point, these two had a serious conflict. Onesimus wronged Philemon in some way. Maybe it was theft, or maybe he cheated him. We don't exactly know. But afterwards, Onesimus ran away. Eventually, Onesimus came to Paul in prison, likely to appeal for help. And in the process, he became a follower of Jesus and then a beloved assistant of Paul. And so Paul finds himself in a very difficult and delicate situation as he writes this letter. He's going to ask Philemon not just to forgive Onesimus and receive him back, but to embrace him as a brother in the Messiah and no longer as a slave. Here's how he does it. Paul opens with a prayer, first praising Philemon and thanking God for the love and faithfulness he's shown to Jesus, to his people. And he then paves the way for his request with this line. I pray that the partnership that springs from your faith may effectively lead you to recognize all the good things that work in us, leading us into the Messiah. Now a key word here is partnership, or in Greek, koinonia. It means sharing or mutual participation. It's when two or more people receive something together and share in it, becoming partners. Paul's saying that faithfulness to Jesus means recognizing that all of his followers are equal partners who share together in the gift of God's love 
and grace. And for Paul, this experience of koinonia among Jesus' followers, it's not just an idea that you think about, it's something that you do in your relationships, which moves Paul on to his request. He finally brings up Onesimus. He says that he's become Paul's child in prison, meaning that Paul led Onesimus to dedicate his life and allegiance to Jesus, and so Paul and Onesimus are now family members in the Messiah. He's been serving Paul faithfully in prison, and even though Paul wants to keep him around, he knows that this unresolved conflict with Philemon has to be reconciled if they say that they're followers of Jesus. Which moves Paul on to his bold request, that Philemon receive Onesimus back, no longer as a slave, but as more than a slave, as a beloved brother in the Lord. Now, this is a really tall order. Under Roman law, Philemon had every legal right to have Onesimus punished or put in prison. And Paul's not only asking him to forgive Onesimus, but to welcome back his former slave into Colossae as a social equal, as a family member. <laughs> this is way more than kindness. This is unheard of. It's freeing a slave and then treating them like a family member. It upsets the status quo of the Roman social order, why should Philemon do such a thing? And here Paul pulls a brilliant move. He recalls that key word from the opening prayer. He says, if you're truly a partner with me, it's that Greek word koinonia again, then welcome Onesimus as if he were me. And if he's wronged you or owes you anything, charge it to me and I will repay it. So in this request, we see the heart of Paul's gospel message being acted out. It's first of all about reconciliation. It's just like he told the Corinthians. In the Messiah, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them. So in this situation, Paul is putting himself in the place of Jesus. He will absorb the consequences of Onesimus' wrongdoing. He will pay the cost so that he can be reconciled to Philemon. But Paul's message was about more than just a legal transaction. It's also about koinonia. Onesimus and Philemon and Paul are all equals before God. They all share the same need for forgiveness. And so the ground is level before the cross, which means that Philemon and Onesimus can no longer relate to each other as master and slave. They're family members. They're brothers in the Messiah. Or as Paul told Philemon and the whole church of Colossae, in God's new family, people are not Greek or Jewish or circumcised or uncircumcised or foreigners or uncivilized or slave or free, but the Messiah is all and is in all people. Paul closes the letter stating his confidence that Philemon will do even more than Paul's requested. And he asks him to prepare a guest room because he wants to visit as soon as he gets out of prison. And then with some final greetings, Paul ends the letter. Paul's letter to Philemon is powerful for many reasons. It's the only letter where Paul doesn't explicitly mention Jesus' death or resurrection, and this is not an oversight. He doesn't need to explain the cross with words because he's demonstrating it through his actions. Mm -hmm. Paul's embodying here the meaning of the cross. He has made himself the place through which Onesimus and Philemon are reconciled to God and then to each other. This letter also shows us that the implications of the good news about Jesus, they are extremely personal and never private. The fact that Philemon and Onesimus are now brothers in the Messiah, it makes their master-slave relationship totally irrelevant. The family of Jesus' people is the place where all are equal recipients of God's grace. It's a new kind of society, or a new humanity, as he called it in the letter to the Colossians, where people's value and social status, it's not defined by race or gender or social or economic class. In the Messiah, there are simply new humans who are equal partners, who share together in God's healing mercy through Jesus. And that's what Paul's letter to Philemon is all about. Okay. What, um, what struck you as, as they're going through uh, the book of Philemon? I like the fact that, like as you mentioned, that Paul takes the role of Christ in reconciling these two. So he's he plays Christ's role 
Yeah. Yes, I, I talked to sin bearer, basically. Yeah. I'll take off the jets. I'll the jets on me, you too. I keep mm -hmm. wondering where he gets resources. Oh. From all the wealthy women. <laughs> well, he makes big statements like, I'll take care of this, this, this. And yet he's in jail. Right, right. Well, he's in he's contact in. with these other people, you know, writes up the letters. So, so, um, so think about Philemon receiving the letter <laughs> and going, wait a minute, Paul, you can't even, you know, mm -hmm. you're in prison. How are you going to pay me back? I mean, it could have created a, a whole dynamic. Yeah. But Paul is saying that I'm gonna I'm gonna handle mm -hmm. this. Now, just because you're in prison, you don't lose it necessarily. But I, I think it's a good point. He's in a weak position here. But they know he's honest and they know he's reliable and he can do what he yeah. But I want to put a couple of lessons back and he was sometimes under a house of rather than physically right. being in mm -hmm. prison. So right. People could come and give him money. Maybe, maybe he still has a bunch of tents in the warehouse. Hey. <laughs> well, he didn't have to spend his money because he was in jail. So he had, if he had any money, he had money, right? He didn't spend it. <laughs> other things that you, uh, other dynamics here? Well, I think all of them must have had a great faith. I. I thought it was kind of vulnerable for Onesimus to visit him in jail, since Philemon could have said, well, just keep him in jail. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like if you robbed the bank, no one caught you, then you don't go in to the police station very often. <laughs> uh, you just stay away. Uh, again, they could have locked him up. Yeah. But didn't it say that, that he assisted Paul in jail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul wanted him, but knew that. He so you can back. imagine you're trapped. I mean, I, I've told this story before, but um, uh, even to this day, let's say in Africa, that's the situation at the best. Uh, if you're in prison, they don't feed you. Oh, mm -hmm. So if yeah. you don't have relatives, if you don't have friends, you're dead. Mm -hmm. You will not be fed. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that was the old tradition. You know, it wasn't like they're going to use tax dollars to pay for prisoners, which is one of the reasons we read so often in scripture what, what's one of the roles of the church to visit those in prison. So we would, you know, uh, make rice and beans and just dripping and palm oil to get as many calories uh -huh. per feeding as possible. But if they wanted you dead, all they had to do is move you to another prison outside your family circle. Yeah, yeah. So you just so move them to some place where you're more isolated yeah. and then there's no one to feed you and you die. And they could always say, we didn't do it. So this is um, pretty powerful that people are coming to help Paul in prison. So they're bringing food, they're bringing Remember that one time he said, bring my coat? Yes, last time. it's going to be winter. It's going to be winter. And I, so, but you're dependent on your friends. And in this case, you're, uh, Paul is dependent on church people uh, to visit him. And even traveling out of, out of the city to, to visit him. You're just very vulnerable in prison. It, it just strikes me the similarities between Bonhoeffer's time in jail mm -hmm. and Paul's time in jail in terms of guests bringing and sharing and Paul, uh, you know, still being Paul while in jail and suffering. It, it, we all know this. Sometimes, well, often we, we experience it probably more in a, a hospital than we do um, in prison. But boy, you know, when you're isolated, for a long a period of time in the hospital, when people come to visit you, it's, it's a big well, deal. Well, COVID was a good was a good example of that. It shut down society. Mm -hmm. How many years? And our lives are still not the same. Mm -hmm. This is also a grand tradition of letter writing from prison. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, starting mm -hmm. with Paul that we read, 
but Bonhoeffer, of course, but Martin Luther King Jr. There are just others that wrote from prison that we hang on to, to those experiences. And I think it's the isolation that focuses the mind, mm. focuses the heart, and, and some do really well under those conditions and others fall apart. That's not critique, that's just yeah. you know, the way it is. Okay. I, was I keep wondering, I keep wondering why it is that Onesimus sought out Paul. Um, he might, must have known him from their experience yes. in Colossae or Ephesus and known that he would find some grace and mercy there. Um, and Paul, it must have been difficult for Paul to understand whether or not Onesimus in his commitment to Christ really was doing that out of sincerity or because it was a way to get in touch with Paul and get something off of Paul. I, I think there are some, some complex feelings going on back and forth here. And Paul seems to have psyched it out and uh, understood it and understood that Onesimus's, Onesimus' conversion to Christianity was sincere and from the heart. I, I think you're right, Dwight. The way I, the way I've read it was uh, Anethmus, of course, knew Paul from the church. He knew uh, that his master had a special relationship that had come to faith uh, through Paul's ministry. And now he's in trouble. He ran away. He ran away with some goods. And now I'm in trouble. And where, who, to whom do I turn? And Paul, he probably felt enough of a relationship, or at least there'd be some compassion there, it would be a, uh, an open ear, maybe only. But I think he goes there to prison to, to find help. And uh, then everything turns around with his conversion. Right? So, But I, I, I think initially it was, I'm in trouble. I can't just go back to Philemon. He'll throw me in jail. Can you help me out? And uh, then one thing leads to the other, where the whole situation changes with his conversion and then Paul's argument. That's the way I see it, Dwight. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to trust Paul's judgment on this, that his conversion to Christianity is sincere. It isn't just as a way of, of getting off from his offenses. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if indeed he became the bishop of Ephesus, that certainly reflects his, 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 his sincerity of his conversion. But I, I'm just uh, wondering about the dynamics, the flow back and forth of the dynamic dynamics here. Paul would have might have been the only person in Rome that Onesimus knew. Um, and he gets to Rome, wondering, what in the world am I going to do now? I'm a runaway. And he looks up one person that he knows who's in Rome. And how does he find Paul? Um, I don't know. There's some interesting things going on here. And it all turns out fine. It seems like it all turned out fine. Uh, he mm -hmm. took some gumption, even with a letter from Paul, for uh, an SMS to return with a letter. Mm -hmm. You can imagine how sheepish he showed up at the door, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a letter. Um, even how that worked, I'd love to know whether you know you sent someone ahead of time to say, Look, don't arrest me when I show up at the front door, right? I'm, I'm coming, uh, you know, please, you know, don't you, read the letter don't first. Shoot the messenger, yeah, <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. Yeah. Other insights, Philemon, Philemon was willing to accept it that uh, this really was a sincere conversion, mm -hmm. that Onesimus was a different man coming back. Uh, it says something about Philemon's spirit, his graciousness, that he could take this slave back as a brother. I think uh, it says a lot about Onesimus, but it says even more about Philemon. Uh, Onesimus has a lot to lose. Uh, excuse me, has mm -hmm. only things to gain here. Mm -hmm. So an upside, huge upside. Philemon, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's kind of new territory. I've got my rights. I've got my rights. Onesimus doesn't have rights here. 
Philemon does. And so it's, um, you know, uh, yeah. if it all worked out the way we think it did, mm -hmm. uh, Philemon's incredible. Talk about genuine conversion. Right. I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. You've got some of this too. I'm thinking of two examples before we go into the groups. You know, what was the killing of, uh, was it the Charlotte? Nine, you know, when, when the boy. Yeah, yeah. What was that? So, as we know, one of those shot had gone to our seminary in Gettysburg, and then the person who shot the boy, uh, who shot them, was an ELCA member. Yeah. So we were kind of in that on both sides. And when you heard these women forgiving the killer. You're going, okay, whoa, I don't know if I can do that. You know, we showed the Corey Tembu video mm -hmm. Sunday about uh, forgiveness and how hard that can be. So it's someone who has the right, who gives up that right and forgives, which we always admire because we understand how difficult that can be. Yeah. I would also say here in this church, we've got people from all over let's just say we have a, people from a wide economic span here. We have those who are here legally. We have people who are here illegally in our church. We've got um, all sorts of, of members from all over Latin America, mm -hmm. Cuba, Central. Mexico, <clears throat> Puerto Rico, Dominican, Venezuela, Argentina, Colombia. Uh, with all different stories, all different experiences. And all of a sudden, we're part of the body of Christ again. Oh, uh, we have those from Haiti, you know. Out, out. By the way, a lot of them had kids at the, what was Jim Cooper, to the youth gathering. Mm -hmm. you know, and to see that mix of, of kids was pretty impressive. And you look at them and you say, wow, that's us at Emmanuel now. We're just, we're not just from Iowa and Minnesota. Wisconsin, that was hard enough to, to be in the church with someone who's you know a Packer fan. Unbelievable. As, as, you know. But from people from all over with with some hard personal stories, economic stories, political stories. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it might be easy because they're hiding over. In another, you know, in Jose's church service, or they're out there at the park, but they're actually also in the nine o'clock service as well. Sometimes we don't lift that up, but it's true. And you know, so this Sunday we're all together at a picnic, and worshiping together. No Jewish people. So no, no this, no that. Um, Eve, Paul might write us and say there are no illegal aliens or citizens. All are one in Christ. You go, what? 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 Because mm -hmm. those are the distinctions. Now mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think of what, how Paul might write this letter to us. And you say, well, wait a minute. You, you know, you got to come legally, and you got to go through the process. And and just like to uh, Onesimus, you still got to serve. But he's not a master anymore. He's a brother. Mm -hmm. so, so wow. You yeah. know how do you how do you receive it's, all the yeah. All right, let's get to our uh, group, so we'll discuss this a little while. Thanks for you guys joining us online. Are you going to put them together in a chat room? Uh, yes, I would love to. Good. We almost could be a small group. All this is that. We're the smallest group. Give me a moment. We're such a small group. We are the group. We are the group. How can we group? Us? Can we be part of your group? Yes. Yes. You can. Can you be part of my group? Just, are you uh, just here? Yeah, well, I'm sure you have to inscribe it. Here. I think it's too like with the slave when he took on us in this back. I was thinking about the other slaves that were. All right. Any. They'll be back in. So, first of all, isn't this a great letter?
will be back in 50 minutes. This is, you know, you think, oh, this little letter, um, we won't have enough to talk about. This is a great letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many dynamics there that uh, I think uh, that we can get our, our, our arms around. Uh, I just think it's wonderful. Um, anything that came out of your conversation you want to bring up? Uh, Jim? Uh, welcome back to the Land Level. Uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Good to see you. Jim always looks, you. always looks younger when he comes back. And spends time he hangs out with his kids. <laughs> Your nose is brown. <laughs> uh, what, what can you tell us about the youth gathering that uh, might be interesting? Yeah, well, we traveled to New Orleans. You know, there and back, we had two vans, uh, 10 of us in total. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, we were gone together for eight days, so there's just some good bonding that happens uh, as a group. Oh. You, you want to kill each other, and then you yeah. get We all listen to Pastor <laughs> Rick's sermon as we're driving <laughs> through the panhandle. Hey, we all need to forgive each other, yes, too. Right. Um, Came at a good time. <laughs> all right. I, I think for kids, when they just have something like this, it's tied to the church. The church mm -hmm. sent them off. They went on this experience, right? They'll remember that. Oh, yeah. we, have, we have a lot of older kids. I dropped two of them off at their college orientation coming oh. down 75. One at Ocala and one in Tampa. Oh, and we have another one that's heading off to Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, there hasn't been a youth gathering in six and a half years. So, this is so you know, they've made some good strides to get together. Um, I don't know if you saw the little video. Uh, mm -hmm. I sent out a little slideshow. Mm -hmm. Jennifer sent it out. Oh, no, you didn't get, get that? No. Okay, okay. It's on, um, the, it's on the, we'll send it out again. Okay. But Jennifer sent something out on Monday Okay. that mm -hmm. I put together at 1230 at night because we ate at the Waffle House and I drank too much coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to try to put a little slideshow together. Um, but yeah, you know, New Orleans has a lot of rich architecture and people and there's the stories there. And then... Uh, there was 16,000 people that that gathered. And um, and so we we walked away uh, challenged. Mm -hmm. I have That's a question. Good. Where did they where what did they clean up where they got all those bags of trash? You know, they always had the picture of the big the the big bag, the big plastic bags. Where was that? At at the gathering. Maybe I thought it was one of the work projects they did. You know, they did they have the different work projects? Well, there? it's a little bit. It was a little bit disappointing. I mean, there's there was more sort of instructional things on your day of accompaniment. Like one day you meet with all the Florida Bahamas Senate yeah. in Georgia, North and South Carolina. That was that was that was that was. And we did a workshop service together. And then one day you have this time in the convention center, and another day. We call it accompaniment. It it's a new vogue word for um, service project. Okay, yeah. But we got directed back into the convention center, and oh. we learned about advocacy. Okay. Mm -hmm. From from like a grassroots level all the way up to Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so maybe it wasn't on yours. Maybe it was somebody else's thing. You know, another person I know that one one thing and that they we just did, had it was like it would have been it would have been a room twice his size and it was just it just but it was Cold outside trash. yeah big yeah, no. you know like the 50 gallon trash bag okay um, that, that and i just been. wondered what they cleaned up <laughs> yeah that well there's a lot of trash yeah that there. yeah that, yeah there's no pressure about that mm -hmm. one thing we did do is we built uh i would say probably several thousand hurricane relief kits okay so it's a that. five five gallon your um, bucket not five yeah the big bucket like that right yeah. you see at home depot and then each synod brought something so our synod was supposed to bring lanterns uh -huh. so in bahama we brought lanterns other people bought uh batteries other people bought um wet wipes other people bought several things that mm -hmm. would go in there right mm -hmm. so the whole your whole bucket is full. And then these are in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. So when a hurricane hits, these things can be distributed to families. So that was a, a real tangible. Thing. That's mm -hmm. good. Do you have writing on the outside of the bucket? No, they were painting. No, they did it. They were just, they just had color on it. Because like uh, some places they do flood buckets. 
for after a flood. You'd have yeah. rocks and rubber gloves and all of that stuff. Yeah, so this definitely This would be a hurricane. Bug. Yes. And, and the kids were quite diverse. We went there. We've had yeah, we had uh, from the park, we had Isaac. We, he's African-American. Um, he's going to be a senior at Palmetto Ridge. And uh, we had another girl, Melissa. And then we had Savannah. And we had um, Josh and his brother, uh, Jacob Dominguez, um, who uh, Carlos Dominguez is on the church council. And the Cunningham. And so yeah, it was a, it was a it was a good many, group of kids. Wow. kids. We had eight kids. Eight. Mm -hmm. And we were the Perfect. we were like the fourth largest church of kids in all of Florida. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So oh. the, a lot of uh, the numbers have gone down, mm -hmm. but it was a good start. The next one's going to be held in Minneapolis in 2027. Nice. So, all right. All right, well, it's good to have you back. It's good to have the kids back. And uh, I remember, you know, when I was uh, 16. You don't remember. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> we went to New Orleans, too, and the, the theme, no, actually, we went to Houston, was Missouri Senate, right? Missouri Senate, but we went to no, Houston, Texas, but yeah. New Orleans was, uh, was in Houston. And, and it was called With <laughs> Eyes Wide Open. And yeah. I couldn't. Imagine why they would take young people and drop us off on Bourbon Street, you know. But I thought the theme fit. Mm -hmm. You got what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you you got what? The theme fit. Oh. <laughs> why you drop, drop a bunch of 16 year olds off on Bourbon Street? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Right? Look at everything. Yeah. My brother was arrested. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he, because he's got a disability, he's got cerebral palsy, he can't walk. Yeah. So he sit, sat down on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. you know, right. to, especially. The disabled are not allowed to sit on the sidewalks on mm. Bourbon Street because they're usually beggars, right? Yeah. Um, so we tried to explain why he was sitting on the sidewalks at nine in the morning, and the police didn't care. So uh -huh. he was hauled off. Oh, yeah. really? so, yeah. so our our accompaniment project was to get him out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> With some benches, you know, there's Cafe Dumont. You've heard of that, right? Yeah. And there was this place called the Sauce Palace. So think of it about <laughs> twice the size of this room. Every sauce you could imagine is on this wall, and you can sample any one of them, anyone. So you would have the time of your life. One of the kids came up to me and gave me watermelon barbecue. Okay, great. Oh, geez. But then uh, three of our kids said they wanted to taste the hottest sauce oh, in the place. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And the guy said, that's fine. Let me get the waiver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The side of wave, right? Then he brings out a gallon of vanilla ice cream right next to a big, big gallon of vanilla ice cream. I got the two girls, Isa and Olivia, and then Chris, Chris the Jolly Green Giant. You know, he's Marina's son. <laughs> and all three of them take it up, you know, a, a fairly good amount. Bang, bang, bang. And the two girls go, that was good. <laughs> and this guy, is freaking out. He's like, how are you doing that? He's like, I've seen grown men cry. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chris is doing the flapping the wings. I mean, Chris is already crying. <laughs> crying. He's screaming for ice cream. So this stuff was powerful. Well, two things. I found out that Issa, ever since she was a baby, her dad said, you could, you could handle spice. Oh. So she... She Ooh, knew about it. and Olivia kind of had the same backstory, like yeah, okay. bring it on. Right. And uh they both were whoa champions. Meanwhile, Chris, well, <laughs> let's just say he struggled the rest of the yeah. night. What you know, you used to struggle with it. Yep. <laughs> Where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we're not used to we want to thank Gene for friends. sticking with us for the whole time. Oh, yeah. thank oh, you. Thank you. It was wonderful to be here today. Good. Let's let's close with a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we do thank you for your gifts, uh, not just for Bible studies and times together, but also for trips um, with experiences of the wider church. We pray that indeed you would bless us on this day. We look forward to Sunday when we can all worship together, and uh, we pray for blessings as on our home. 
way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thank Hope you. you can find your way out of the parking okay. lot. No, no, no. It's not a rainstorm today. It's just road work. It's <laughs>